Have you finished editing your photo, but you're not sure which export settings to use? Whether it's for Instagram, printing, or sending to a client, I'll show you exactly how to export with confidence. Hi there, I'm Zach, and today we're covering one of the most important and confusing parts of Lightroom Classic, exporting your photos. We'll walk through the export window step by step, explain what each option does, and I'll show you how to save your settings as presets so you're not starting from scratch every time you jump in. So there's several ways to get to the export of photos interface. The first way is when you're in your film strip down here, you can right click and find export under the export window. You can do the same thing with multiple photos selected. It's in the same exact place. You can also find it up under the file menu, the export options right there, or my favorite, which is command shift E which brings up the export files interface. I believe that's control E on windows. So this opens the exporting dialog box. Yeah, there's a lot of options here, but don't worry. We're going to walk through it step by step. I'll show you which ones actually matter. Okay. Well, now we've got the export interface open. It's exporting five files because I had, because I had five selected down here when I hit command shift E export location. You can choose any of these options. Most people are going to choose a specific folder, especially we've talked about organization already in the series. Keep that in mind as you're exporting. Choose the folder you want to export to. And this is not the folder I want to export to. I want to add it to this mini macro folder, which is uh, where the original photos existed. And I'm also going to create a new folder as I do it. I'm going to show you how to do this. The, the Lightroom way is to choose this option, put in subfolder. I like to name my subfolder finished. You can add to a catalog at the same time. And if you come across a file that has the exact same name, it wants to know what to do here. And you definitely always want to add, choose, ask what to do. Careful using these other options unless you know exactly what you're doing. What that means is if the file name already exists in the folder, it's not going to automatically override it. It's going to bring up a dialog box and say, Hey, do you want to keep this or override it? I'm sure we've all seen that before, but this is where you control that option. You can sequence your files. Uh, if you, if you're exporting a lot of wedding photos, you can uh, determine what you want them to be named in this interface. I don't use this often myself for my style of shooting, but you should know it's there under file settings. You can determine, what exactly is being exported. Uh, I typically export in JPEG, but you do have all these other options. If you're going to move this workflow to Photoshop, you might want to export to a PSD. Um, if you've, uh, if you're going to move it and and try to create a transparent background, you're going to need a PNG. Um, you can determine the quality of photos. I typically like to set the quality around 80 or more. Um, this can, differ depending on the platform that you're going to. If you're creating a portfolio piece, you may want max quality. If you're sending it to a client, you may want max quality. Um, you can choose the quality and then limit the file size. These I believe do work in order where it'll attempt to make the best quality, but it'll keep it under a certain file size. Uh, if you've limited on disk space or you're uploading to a specific platform that won't allow files over a certain size, this is how you can control that without having to reopen the photo and and make the change again. As far as color space, I like to use Adobe RGB 1998. Um, going into the differences here is uh, more than this, this series is going to entail. Going down to image sizing, you can check resize to fit if you want to control the dimensions. Uh, for web, 2048 pixels along the long edge is a common standard. For print, leave this unchecked. You want the full resolution image that you're exporting. Uh, for resolution, uh, 300 PPI is a good place to start. Um, you can lower this for web as if you're going to upload it to a lot of platforms like social media. Uh, they're going to ignore this and adjust it to their platform for maximum performance anyway. Output sharpening applies a little extra sharpening during export. Uh, choose standard or low sharpening, then pick the right type. Screen for online, glossy paper, or excuse me, glossy paper or matte for print. Don't overthink this too much. Just pick the settings that match your output. Uh, there are other options here, which we may go into in a later video, but they're not important for today. This will that gets you through the basics of export settings, and and you don't need to get too much more complicated than that for your first few rounds of photos. Okay. 
once you've got export settings that work for you, especially if you are working for uh, on the same types of photo shoots all the time. I frequently am. I primarily shoot wildlife and macro. So I've got these general settings that I, I like. About the only thing I'm going to change on a regular basis now is the initial location. So I'm going to make a preset of the, of the settings so that I don't have to go through and fill all that out every single time. To do that, I'm going to click Add. Brings up the interface. And I'm going to put this as my basic output settings. You can name that whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Where is it going to save? Under user presets, you can have a bunch of different presets. If you've got a regular client who you know needs specific settings, you might build a preset for exports just for them and you, you, you manage that here. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. Now, next time I bring up this window, I just have to select my basic output settings and it's going to pre-fill all these options that I've selected. You might make different export settings for the purpose that you're intending. Uh, I may want a full resolution export settings so that I have great copies of these images to work on later. I also might have some presets that are specifically for social media to optimize the way they look. Um, or you might even have them outputting different sizes of photos depending on different platforms. Um, I really like this for client delivery. I haven't done uh, a lot of client work. Creating a preset though, for at least your basic output settings can save you a lot of time and there's no more guessing what you used last time. And that's how to export your photos the right way in Lightroom Classic. No more guesswork, no more stress. In the final video of this beginner series, we'll zoom out and we're gonna talk about ed your editing workflow as a whole, how to stay organized, maintain a healthy catalog, and keep growing as a Lightroom Classic user. If this video helped, hit subscribe, drop a comment. I'd love to hear what kinds of export settings you're using and how they benefit your workflow.